Hello everyone, for this video we're going to talk about the tangent segments theorem, the theorem 103. Hopefully, after watching this video, you will be able to achieve this learning target. I can illustrate and solve the problems using tangent segments theorem. Okay, first of all, what is a theorem 103 or the tangent segments theorem? So, if two tangent segments are drawn to a circle from an external point, then we can therefore conclude two ideas. First, we have the two tangent segments are congruent and the angles between the tangent segments and the line joining the external points to the center of the circle are considered congruent as well. To further understand what is theorem 103, let us have this example. So given segment AC and BC are tangent segments, to circle X. Now, let us have this illustration. As you can see, our external point here is point C. And we do have here segment AC and BC which are considered tangent since these two segments intersect the given circle at exactly one point. So, for AC, it intersects the circle at point A and for BC, it intersects the circle at B. Okay, now based on theorem 103, we can therefore conclude that if the two tangent segments are drawn to a circle from an external point, then we can say first is the two tangent segments are congruent. So what are the two tangent segments again? So we have AC and BC. So, you can put tick line to indicate uh, that they are congruent or you may write line segment AC is congruent to line segment BC. Next conclusion that we can have uh, applying theorem 103 is that the angles between the tangent, so the angles between the tangent segments, so here our tangent segments AC and BC, and the line joining the external points to the center of the circle are congruent. So we have here the external point and the line that connects the external point to the center of the circle, this yellow line. So the angle that forms in between the two tangent segments. Okay, so these are this angle. Okay, so we can say that they are congruent as well based on theorem 103 or we can name it angle ACX is congruent to angle XCB. Okay, to further understand the concept of uh, theorem 103 and the previous um, theorems that we discussed, let us have this example. So, use the given figure below to find the value of x. Now, given here, we do have 58 degrees and uh, we do have here the angle x and we are asked to find out this one. So, observe the given illustration. As you can see, we do have tangent segment here and applying theorem 101, if we do have tangent segment or tangent line, then if we're going to draw a radius going to the point of tangency of our tangent line or tangent segment, then we can form a perpendicular line or that means we can have right angle or it measures exactly 90 degrees. Now, aside from this, we can also observe that we do have another tangent segment, which means we will have another perpendicular line here, or we can have right angle once more. Now, if you're going to observe the given illustration, as you can see, we do have here a four-sided polygon. And we all know any four-sided polygon, if we're going to sum up the measures of all interior angles, we would have 360 degrees. Now, to find out the measure of uh, the angle X, let us um, get the sum 
of the angles which we know the measures already. So let us have 58 degrees, the given uh, measure of an angle. And uh, we do have two right angles based on application of theorem 101. So that means we do have 290 degrees here. And the other one, we do have x. We don't know yet this one. What is the measure of this angle x? So, just simply add the, the like terms here. 58 plus 90 plus 90. So, 90 plus 90, we will have 180. Plus 58, then we will have 238 degrees. Plus x. Now, we are not yet done. So, let us combine like terms. So, um, you may use the, the complete process for um, properties, but um, I'm going to use here the shortcut wherein I'm going to combine like terms by transposition. So, I would have 360 degrees minus 238 degrees equals x. Now, we have 360 minus 238. 38, so I would have 122 degrees equals x. Therefore, this is the measure of our angle x or the value of x. Now, so let us have our second example. Now, as you can see here in our illustration, we do have again given angle measure and that is 42 degrees. And uh, as you can see, we do have tangent segment here again. Therefore, we will be able to form again perpendicular line as we draw a radius going to the point of tangency of this tangent segment. Thus, we do have 90 degree angle or right angle. And as you can see, observing the illustration, we do have a three-sided polygon or triangle and um, we all know that the sum of the measures of all interior angles of a triangle is always equivalent to 180 degrees so this time let us find let us form the equation for the sum of the measures of interior angles of a triangle so 180 degrees we do have the given angle measure which is 42 degrees Plus, we got the measure of this angle because of the application of theorem 101. So, that means we do have 90 degree angle since it's perpendicular. Plus, the measure of angle X that we don't know yet for now. So, let us do or um, simplify the given data here. So, 42 plus 90, we would have 100. 32 degrees and simply copy the x and then transpose if necessary or apply the necessary properties but i'm gonna use the shortcut again so 180 transpose positive 132 will have negative 132 degrees equals x so 180 minus 132 we would have 48 degrees therefore this is the angle measure of angle x or the value of x okay so for next example use the given um, figure below to find the value of x and y so here in our illustration as you can see we do have tangent segment again therefore um, drawing the radius going to the point of tangency we will be able to have perpendicular line so thus it measures this angle measures 90 degrees now so looking at the bigger figure of a triangle so we have here the 90 degree angle 45 degree angle and the measure of angle x we all know that the sum of the measures of all interior angles of a three-sided polygon or a triangle is always 180 degrees thus to find the measure of this so let us have the equation first so x plus 45 degrees plus 
the 90 degree angle that we come up here in applying theorem 101 so this is always equivalent to 180 degrees so combining like terms we would have 45 plus 90 we would have 135 degrees equals 180 degrees and of course so i'm going to use the shortcut so 180 degrees transpose the positive 135 so i would have um minus 135 degrees so x is equal to 180 minus 135 so i would have 45 degrees so this would be the measure of um, angle x so this one is 45 degrees now how about the measure of angle y so here as you can see if we're going to look at this figure this one so this angle this one this angle um, intercept a semicircle so as you can see we do have a diameter here the line segment passes through the center of the circle thus it is a diameter and applying um, Postulate 24, a diameter divides a circle into two semicircles. Thus, we do have this um, two semicircles. And now, we can see that we do have an inscribed angle applying the semicircle um, postulate. So, if an angle inscribed a semicircle, then it is a right angle. So, therefore, this measures 90 degrees as well. So, if we're going to look at this um, smaller triangle again, if we do have 45 degrees, 90 degrees, so what do you think will be the measure of this? So, this smaller angle, this one. So, of course, we're going to add 90 plus 45, then subtracted by 180, then we would have 45 degrees here. So, applying theorem... 101 a while ago we got this perpendicular line that means it measures 90 degrees if the other part we cut it into half the other part is 45 so what do you think is the measure of this for angle y so 90 minus 45 so that means measure of angle y or the value of y would be 45 degrees as well so that's it okay Next example we have, as you can see, we do have an external point B. And we do have two tangent segments, AB and CB. Now, we can apply um, theorem 103, which um, means that we can conclude that the two tangent segments are congruent. Thus, we can have to find the value of x here for x minus 9 equals 15. Why? Because we all know as mentioned in our theorem 103, so the two tangent segments are congruent. So now, to continue the process, let us just do the necessary properties, apply the necessary properties here. So, I'm just gonna use the shortcut to combine like terms. So, I have negative 9 transpose, I will have positive 9. So, 4x equals 15 plus 9, I will have 24. And then, divide both sides by 4. So, x is equal to 6. So, that means the value of x is equal to 6. Okay. Okay, let us have our last example. So, here we do have our external point P. And as you can see, we do have two tangent segments, um, segment PA and segment PB. And as you can see also, we draw the line starting from um, external point up to the center point of our circle. Thus, it divides the angle in between the two tangent segments into two congruent angles and that is based on theorem 103. Now, if the measure of angle APO is 54 degrees, thus we can conclude that 
the value of x or the measure of angle x would be 54 degrees as well. Okay, and how about for y? So to find the measure of angle y, we all know that um, measure of APO is 54 and measure of OPB is 54 as well. So you just simply add 54 plus 54 degrees. So we would have 108 degrees. Therefore, angle APB, so measure of angle APB is equal to 108 degrees. But looking at the illustration, to find the, the measure of angle Y, we also need to apply the theorem 101 wherein if we do have tangent segment or tangent line, then if we're going to draw a radius going to the point of tangency, therefore we can form perpendicular line and thus we will have right angle. So as you can see here, this is a 90 degree angle and then the other um, side would be 90 degree angle as well, applying again theorem 101. So that means um, to find y, since as you can see, we do have four-sided polygon here, you just simply add all the, the angle measures that we've got and equate it to 360 degrees. Again, why 360 degrees? Because the sum of the measures of all interior angles of a four-sided polygon is always 360 degrees. So let us just... Um, add it all so 108 degrees plus the 290 degrees that we've got based on theorem 101 and the, the y which is we don't know yet but we all know that the sum of the measures of all interior angles of a four-sided polygon is 360 so we equate it to 360 then combine like terms so 90 plus 90 180 plus 108 so we will have 288 degrees plus y equals 360 now combine like terms so we would have y equals 360 minus 288 i'm just going to use the shortcut so i will transpose positive 288 will become negative 288 then subtract lastly we would have 360 minus 288 so we would have 72 degrees for y and this will be our final answer okay so that's it for this video i do hope you understand the topic that we discuss here in this video and now if you were not able to subscribe yet in my youtube channel please do subscribe so that you will be notified of the new playback videos thank you for watching god bless